So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology. Welcome back to the channel, iPhone 14 Pro Max versus iPhone 10s Max, you're up to bat. Let's go ahead and boot this up. Three, two, go and see which one does turn on faster. Now keep in mind that the 10s Max launched in 2018 alongside the iPhone 10R, which was a great phone at the time as well. It featured the Apple A12 Bionic chipset, four gigabytes of RAM, and uh, the iPhone 14 Pro Max says, sit down 10s Max, you're a little smaller, you're gonna turn on a little slower. But 10s Max turns on only a few seconds later. You can see that the iPhone 14 Pro Max does feature Apple, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max does feature Apple A16 Bionic chipset, six gigabytes of RAM, and uh, also is the latest and greatest. And the iPhone 14 Pro Max does feature Apple A16 Bionic, and six gigabytes of RAM. So definitely the newer phone turns on faster. All right guys, so when it comes to biometrics, both of them do feature face ID scanning. One is in the notch here for the iPhone XS Max, one is in the dynamic island. However, it's the same feature. So let's go ahead and take a look and you'll see they'll both unlock at around the same time. So there's no real changes. The XS Max was also pretty good on a lot of angles as well. So. I don't see any change in how these feel to unlock. Speed-wise, it's identical. There's no Touch ID, nothing like that on 14 Pro Max. So definitely, you're not getting any upgrade there. All right, so I wanna talk about the general user experience because I usually test the phones before I make these videos. And I gotta tell you, the XS Max is surprisingly still butter smooth. However, it does remind me a lot of like the iPhone 14 and maybe the upcoming 14 plus and that this phone is just kind of a 60 Hertz panel. So not quite as smooth as the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So the 14 Pro Max definitely feels more polished because of that 120 Hertz. Now keep in mind that I haven't really drained the battery too much on my iPhone 10s Max. So it's actually at the 100% capacity. So this test is totally fair. It should perform about its best it can. Also, we have the same software version on both phones. So we are on 16.0.2 as of the recording of this video right now. And these are official versions, non-betas. So that is basically what we're gonna be running in this test. So we've arrived at the app portion of this video. You can see everything is closed out for both devices. Let's begin with calendar. And you can see about the same. We'll go into calculator. Again, about the same clock. And it looks like, I mean, if you slowed it down that the 14 Pro Max is a microsecond faster, at least in this one, definitely quicker than the iPhone XS Max. But, you know, it's not gonna be a major change day to day. I don't know what's going on with the weather here. But let's go ahead and do that one again. It seemed like it couldn't grab it on the XS Max, but you're not gonna see major changes in just basic applications. They do seem to perform just fine and these basic apps, no matter which iPhone you're using. We'll go into App Store, but I throw them in there just to show you, you know, real world apps you would open every day, like checking out some new apps and stuff like that. And let's go over here to apps right here. And you can see 14 Pro Max a little bit quicker there. So, you know, just these little things day to day throughout the system should feel a little faster on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but this is gonna be Things that add up throughout the day, you might notice it just feels a little bit snappier than the iPhone XS Max. However, the XS Max, for the age that it is, is performing extremely well. Nothing like, I always think back to iPhone 5S days, 4S days, when those phones started to get old because of the one gig of RAM, they really didn't last too well. Nowadays, the iPhones still feel good even four or five years later. We'll go into Twitter, and you can see that's first on the left by a hair profile and what's important to note here is that you know both phones are still fast enough for everyday usage in the modern world so it's not like you bought an iphone 10s max and if you have to wait because the iphone 14 pro max is on pre-order and you're waiting for it like it's going to be a problem you're not going to be suffering or nothing like that or if you wanted to try out a new older iphone for the first time you wanted a max phone and you found this thing on a deal it's not like you would be suffering you're using the latest software you can see groupon pretty similar but Amazon, you can see Amazon first on the left. So again, what I'm seeing here is just a hair quicker on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but <laughs> it's kind of shocking how well 
the iPhone XS Max is still doing in 2022. It just proves that iOS is so efficient that it doesn't, that Apple is basically making chips that are more powerful than you actually need. Um, it's a good thing because down the line, the phone will continue to perform well. But like I say, I don't think, you know, most people are gonna notice a big difference. We'll go into Dead Trigger 2. You will notice that the 14 Pro Max is faster in games to load them up. It's also smoother with the ProMotion display. You can see right there, just quicker overall, but you're also gonna notice the bigger screen. You're also gonna notice Dynamic Island. So you're gonna notice a lot of other things. But man, I am impressed with this 10s Max. And this is not a video to sell you the 10s Max. No, no way, Jose, that's not happening right now. But I will say that, you know, this these phones right here, both are still very enjoyable to use. We'll go into Temper Run 2. And the iPhone XS Max actually had a true gold, if you will. The newer iPhone 14 Pro Max gold looks like a yellow, so not a fan of that. You can see Temper Run 2 faster. So when you get into the games, again, they're gonna the higher quality or the the more demanding the game is, it's just gonna get faster and better on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. We'll go into Geekbench 5. And you can see still not optimized properly for 14 Pro Max, so 10S Max with the win. We'll go into 3D Mark Wildlife. And you can see that's a win to the 14 Pro Max and iMovie. And that's a win to the left. That one actually was loading up an actual movie. Let's go back to projects. I'm gonna rerun that one just to be fair. We'll go into iMovie. You can see only a hair again by just a little to the 14 Pro Max. But you'll notice just how much thicker it is, I mean, than the iPhone XS Max, this phone right here. The iPhone XS Max was a really thin, bigger iPhone, really curved, the cameras didn't stick off like the newer 14 Pros do. Overall, I would say that just like some of my other speed tests, the XS Max held its own. I'm a little bit shocked that it wasn't a little slower, but having the A12 Bionic 2.49 gigahertz over here, four gigs of RAM, doesn't seem like it's struggling too much with everyday applications here in 2022. Very impressive for the old phone with the new phone being a few inches quicker. You know, it's not like majorly so. So let's go ahead and reload the applications. I do expect that them both of them are gonna do very well, but will the iPhone XS Max reload something? That's what I wanna see. This phone is the slower phone here on the right. It also does have less RAM, but maybe, wow, okay, there goes Best Buy slightly slower. So just Best Buy so far, we'll go into Twitter, pretty good. Man, iOS 16, App Store reloading, so there's where that RAM will come into play. Heavy users will notice it, regular users will never. Calculator, calendar, man. So if you bought a 10S Max years ago and you held on, good decision, you're getting your money's worth. This phone is still performing very well, even in reloading applications. You would have to have a ridiculous amount open and doing a ridiculous amount of multitasking to see the 10S Max reload, of course the iPhone 14 Pro Max had basically flawless, perfect performance there. All right, so look at these ridiculous scores on the 14 Pro Max, just crushing the competition. And we're still waiting on the 10S Max. So now when we're actually pushing the phone within a benchmark, you can see the 10S Max lagging far behind. And you could see on the single core, a substantial jump. So technically in the multi-core, you're getting over a 50% increase. So basically you're getting a different look. So everyone knows you have the new phone. You're getting faster performance technically. Day to day, the experience is not majorly different, but the cameras are far upgraded. So, I mean, look at that camera compared to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's just on another level. So there's other reasons to upgrade. We'll talk about that in a full comparison coming soon. We're gonna go ahead and run a 3D Life, or a 3D Mark, not a 3D Life, a 3D Mark wildlife test. And I'll be back when they are done. All right, so both of them maxed out on their overall score, but let's take a look at that average frame rate for wildlife. You can see 59.1, and that frame rate on the iPhone XS Max comes in at 31.4. Now, that tells me that you are getting almost twice the performance on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Also, you'll notice the battery life stayed about the same, so with that 100% capacity, I'm not worried there. But look at those average frame rates. I mean, ridiculous on the 14 Pro Max by comparison. So 
technically speaking, if you're gonna push it to this level, I'm talking games, you're definitely going to see that. I'm gonna do one last thing. I'm gonna run an iMovie test and then we'll wrap this up. All right, so this is a one minute 46 second clip. I was taking a monorail up to the Getty Museum in LA, Los Angeles. So you can see right here, it's not the longest video, but it's relatively decent. So let me go ahead and render this out for you. So we'll go ahead and hit save video and see which phone can do this faster. Now, I mentioned in my previous video that the older iPhones were still doing well, but I don't wanna see the 10s Max beat the 14 Pro Max here, or that would just tell me that this phone is not extremely well optimized yet for this, but it looks like the 14 Pro Max is taking the lead. I'm gonna speed up the video and be back when the export is done. All right, the export is done. The iPhone 14 Pro Max significantly quicker here, like five or six seconds. Now that doesn't seem significant to you, but keep in mind, most videos aren't gonna be this short as people make a five to seven, 10 minute video. This will substantially increase. So if you are doing things like video rendering, things of those natures, the iPhone 14 Pro Max will be a solid upgrade for you from your 10s Max. Let me go ahead now and take a quick photo to see how fast the cameras are. So you can see 14 Pro Max a little quicker there. And okay, I hit the 3D touch. Let's do it again, three, two, go. And then it was about the same. So once it got in memory there, you could see it wasn't too far off. So let's go ahead and snap a photo. And if you're wondering why is the iPhone 14 Pro Max a little blurry, that's because it's larger sensor does create more shallow depth of field. So it's minimum focus distance is a little further back. Whereas the iPhone XS Max, doesn't have that type of camera, so you pretty much get a clean shot every time. When actually taking photos though, both shoot at about the same speed. So overall, you know, which one is quicker? Clearly the 14 Pro Max, but the iPhone XS Max held on very well. I wouldn't say it's impressive performance anymore, but it's definitely impressive for the year this phone came out. It's still holding up is what I'm saying. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you want to see the full comparison between these two. I'll catch you all in the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.